As our heroes prepare for the next leg of their journey, they're going to need to do some stocking up. Stockings, legs, milk. Deity bikes. <laughs> I don't know what order these are going to be in, so I'm going to do them in almost alphabetical order, and then I may switch them around. You're doing almost alphabetical. Yeah, I'm doing them in the order I wrote them in. He makes no promises. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What? I I don't have quite the mastery over the uh, alphabet that I wish I did. All right. (laughs) Bridget, you spend your time off as you usually do, minding the bar at the squeaky wheel, yelling at the staff that don't do their side work, roughing up patrons who become too rowdy, the usual, But as you're closing up one night, Blade Vigil hangs back, obviously wanting your attention. Okay, Mopey Face, what's up? Uh, Bridget, it's it's about the next piece of the wand. I've known where this piece is for a while. You know, you seem to keep saying that, like at the beginning of all these things. Have you noticed that? You've known where these things are for a while, and yet it's like you don't want to give us the whole picture. Well, I, I mean, one... I sort of wait until you guys are ready, because if I sent you to somewhere too advanced first, you know, you might die. So I, I sort of try and go I, easier. Sure. It's, it's very helpful that they're all, you know, in a, you know, Scaled. sort of in a scale. A yeah, scale. It's I, important. We are gated from them. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Claw, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's just us. Uh, oh, are we you... allowed to talk during this too? Hey, 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 what's up? Oh my God! You thieves! I mean, oh, I, oh, I keep forgetting you're not a thief. You're a monk, but you keep on. But I just steal sticking, shit. You stick in your, <laughs> your nosy beak in everybody's bed. Okay, go on, go on. Let's go over and get a beer. Let's get a beer over here, <laughs> off to the side. I'm ignoring far enough away one. that you wouldn't hear us. <laughs> okay. So I've known where this piece is for a while, but the city cloth that you need to go to to get it from, it's changed since the wand was first assembled and. Nobody's come back from there for a long, long time. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if it exists anymore. But based on the rumors I've heard, I need to make sure you're ready. Meet me tonight in the town graveyard. All right. I mean, it is night. Uh, I suppose after I do, do you want to just wait here while I close up? Well, no, I was thinking that I, I will go and then I'll meet you later. Okay. Cool. Nine ish. Nine ish. I don't know what you're going to do. The bar do closes a- at nine. <laughs> well, no, what, is there COVID you, in this world? If you could get, if you I, could get someone to cover your shift. Oh, oh, you want me to leave my bar? Yep, and then come okay. with me to the graveyard tonight. All right. Is Bridget the only one that works? You know, that not would, enough that would make fantasy adventures <laughs> really deal with the rotation schedule of well, servers I'm just and saying, staff. If I'm, if I'm recalling just... correctly, everyone was leaving the bar at the end of the night and Blade hung back. So I just feel like I... that was a, a post 9 p.m. type thing. But I don't know. I, I really don't I, know this I town. I assumed it was about 3 a.m. or some shit. Oh, Blade, you mean like tomorrow at 9 no, no. Are you sure? Because that would solve everything. Yeah. You had an out. <laughs> uh, I was really trying to help you out. It would yes. make all the things you've said make sense. I'm dealing with a timeline here. Yeah, there's tomorrow night. That's a great example. Right, I can do that. Because you close early. Yeah. On, on uh, Sunday. No, on 9-11. Maybe she just has off ship. tomorrow. Tomorrow. I, yep. Tomorrow yeah. is 9-11. You have it off. <laughs> Because there was a 9-11 here in this universe, oh, and it was done by the evil wizard Rod Serling. Should we leave, too, because you're closed? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should leave the podcast. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll meet you then. All right. The next night at 9 o'clock, <laughs> you find Blade <laughs> sitting amongst the tombstones, and he says to you, tonight, coincidentally, is the living moon. There's, so there's sure to be one or two at least. <laughs> and sure enough, you're only sitting there for a few moments before you hear the crack of boards and the movement of earth nearby. Slowly, a skeleton shambles its way out of the earth and claws its way towards you, grasping hungrily for your still-living flesh. But 
As it gets close to you, your symbol of Valkyr sparks and glows with divine energy. And with the slightest issue of your will, lightning arcs out from you, strikes the skeleton, and it turns to dust. Blade pauses thoughtfully in the moonlight and says, Like I thought, your connection to Valkyr has grown so strong that your magic now turns and can destroy the undead. Again, all I've heard is rumors about what's become of Cluth, but let's just hope your new power is enough. downtime apparently drinking with dave and training with alex at the brotherhood question were we in the graveyard just now did we see that you were not in the graveyard no no question who's alex at the brotherhood of the way of the shadow he's your like oh i didn't know he was named okay yeah i named after one of our patrons yeah so you you're training with alex at the brotherhood of the way of the shadow your boring small talk skills have grown so powerful that alex sometimes zones out while you're practicing on him and so on this break He decides you're ready for the next level of your training. As you enter the dojo in the morning, the slide projectors and home and garden magazines are gone, and instead, the walls are lined with a series of faucets. As the steam that fills the room clears slowly away, Alex wraps himself in a towel and says, Claw, clouding your opponent's mind is one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal, but to cloud the mind of others, your mind must be clear. Let me show you what I mean. And with a speed you did not expect, even after all this training, Alex dashes towards you and strikes you. And as he does, he whispers in your ear, Since gummy worms are made with gelatin, they have more bones in them than actual worms. And the enormity of the implications of that statement (laughs) freezes you in your tracks. You can't move. You can barely speak as you consider the profundity of what Alex just said. I'm in your thing too, see? I'm I'm also here. (laughs) And then the thought fades and you're back in the world. Alex says to you, that claw was a shower thought. Use them against your enemies (laughs) and you will temporarily stun them with your insight. Strike at the right time and with the right shower thought and the world will be powerless against you. And so thanks to your level up, you now have an additional attack plus stunning strike. So starting at fifth level, you can interfere with the flow of key in an opponent's body. When you hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to attempt a stunning strike. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of your next turn. Snedrick, you spend your time, as usual, in the Poth Library. Floon has collected even more tomes of illusion magic while you were gone, and you eagerly dive into them, honing your skills, studying so fervently that you fall asleep there at the library several times. And one of those nights, you dream. You dream oh, wait, of an who ancient... do I have to fuck if you tell me my dream? <laughs> <laughs> this is very confusing. <laughs> you dream of an ancient city. You dream of a powerfully magical king. I think it's king. back-to-back masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> that's etiquette, you, right? You say that an awful lot, Heath. You, that's your solution it, it makes to sense a lot this time. of shit. So it does. It does. So, actually, Come, that was pretty, this is way better than the Baskin-Robbins time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could each assign our own better and worse to that. 32 flavors, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You dream of a powerfully magical king who leads the city. You see him play his enchanted lute for his people, its strings glowing with empowered magic. And then you see a city draped in black, a castle with its doors locked and barred. And finally, you see a hand in the darkness, tearing the lute's strings from their pegs. And then you wake up. I need to quit smoking before I fall asleep. (laughs) (laughs)
trip back to the squeaky wheel is uneventful at first. Gladys teaches you a few more magic spells, uh, gives you a long lecture about your performance in the <laughs> test of patience, and... Was it was it a complimentary lecture? <laughs> it was not a complimentary lecture. That's but boy. she also buys you a new javelin. It's a magical one that's actually coated in a special potion that makes it impossible for things to be attached to it in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but you... In your hand, so you can't throw it. <laughs> yep. Can't throw it either. <laughs> well, not with your hand attached to it anyway. Yeah, you have to <laughs> be able to let go. Yeah. So it's a, there's a force field around it. Force field, yes. You have a and, force field javelin now. And it floats now. above me? It is in your pocket. With a force field? Yes, it is. In your pocket? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it tiny or is your, it... No, no, your your pocket just big. floats above the ground a little bit. To the right. Exactly. So you're, you're, you're being followed all at all like... time by a hovering javelin. I have a if pocket the depth of a javelin, just to be clear. Yes. <laughs> da- javelin, she gives you a magic javelin pocket to okay. go with it. No, she doesn't. She <laughs> takes all of it away. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to make a joke like, about you not being able to attach stuff to it. Pocket. She replaces your javelin with a normal javelin. No, because then he's going to be like, claw, oh, climb inside my pocket. And then. <laughs> Then I put this in the pocket. No, it's just yeah. a normal, you get a normal javelin that you can attach things How to. How much bread would be in that pocket? <laughs> right, it exactly. It's like a bottomless Oh, well, he pulls pocket. out the javelin and it's just shish kebobbed with all kinds of different breads. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, you get that. And fairly uneventful until one night, a few days in, you wake up in the middle of the night only to find yourself magically bound to your bed. Glowing blue belts of magic wrap around your hands, your arms, your feet, your legs, even your mouth. You can't cry out for help. Above you looms a figure holding a curved blade. They raise it above your heart and say, A message from the House of Darkmoor. And just as your assassin is about to plunge the dagger down into you, a look of surprise comes over their face. A horn appears in the center of their chest. They slump over and... Carl the Pug of Pegacorn Carl. <laughs> extracts his head from the man's back and says, Who the hell was that? Is Carl wearing the wig? Yes. Of it's always wearing the wig. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea who that is. How did you even know to come here and stab that thing? I was taking a nap under the seven drawer chest downstairs. One of the drawers popped open and this fell onto my head. And he shows you a pebble that says, Carl, go upstairs and kill the guy who's trying to kill Dave. Now, how can a pebble it's say a, that? It has writing on the pebble. Yeah, there's that writing on the pebble. Yep. No, the pebble has a mouth and just said that. that's what I, that's what I assumed. <laughs> the pebble, the pebble said it out loud. Sense. Is that what you meant? Yeah, just it was a now. talking. No, it's got it's written on there. Tomorrow at nine. No, no, it just <laughs> says now. Wait, so the pebble did have writing on it? Yes. Everything you just said was written. Yes. It micro etched on a pebble. Yes. Got it. Correct. So I, saw, I saw a guy who painted little Monet replicas on the head of a pin, dude. It can be done. It can be there you done. go. Etruscan sculptor is... or something like that. <laughs> probably. probably. Oh, this is a world with magic in it. Dave. That's right. By the way, I'm here too in your scene. <laughs> she was in your room watching while, you get While stabbed. I was strapped down with magical blue <laughs> She <restraints>. actually helped. <laughs> I yeah, actually she helped was with that. <laughs> She it thought it was going to be a fun prank. with an assassin. Trying to yeah, that was awkward when you and Carl, when Carl showed up, he was like, hey, are you helping with this? And then he stabbed <laughs> the guy. Yeah. Okay. Not Carl and I can hang. Hey, everybody, just hopping in here in this prepisode to thank you once again for listening to the show. I know, I know this month's episode, a little bit on the shorter side. I'm disappointed as well, but I've made it up to you for as little as a couple of bucks. You can reach through the lacy Patreon curtain and hear a brand new Dungeon Master's Corner. That's a Q&A where I talk about Dungeons and Dragons and the show and what it's like behind the scenes. You can get to that for just a couple of bucks. Just throw us a couple of dollars and you've got an extra few minutes of content this month to wet your whistle while you're waiting for the next arc. And boy, oh boy, I cannot wait for you to hear this next one. This next arc coming up is actually the inspiration for most of the campaign. So... (laughs) Hopefully you don't hate it. I I think you're going to have a ton of fun with it. We certainly had fun playing it. So yeah, if you're sad that this episode's short, 
toss us a couple of dollars over at Patreon and you get access to all three Dungeon Master's Corners as well as the short game we played, The Worst and the Dimmest, which is a variation on Lasers and Feelings. Excellent short game. Uh, and you can check out all that stuff at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus, all spelled out. Also, if you enjoy the show, tell your friends about it. Give us five stars on iTunes. We actually recently broke the top 50 in the United States for leisure. We were right under like a woodworking podcast, which tickles me to no end. So tell your friends, give us those five star reviews. They really do make a difference. All right. I've talked long enough. Let me let you get back to the show. before you leave, Blade gathers you all for a visit to Gary. He says, uh, listen, I haven't heard from Gary for a few weeks. Usually when you guys get back, he sends me a messenger that he's got some new business or idea to show off. Oh, by the way, you guys missed his all-you-can-eat buffet while you were gone, by the way. But uh, anyways, uh, he hasn't written in weeks. I, I think we should pay him a visit just to see if he's okay. Sure. That buffet comment just seemed mean. Like you couldn't respond in time and you just wanted to throw it in there. When you make your way to Gary's shack, you can tell before you step inside, something is different. It always is. Where his shop usually stands is a grassy hill with an odd looking house at the top. And the sewers? Yeah. When you step inside, you can hear arguing from the back. And as the bell over the door rings, Gary hurries out to meet you looking distracted. Oh, um... Hey, guys. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no magic stuff today. I, I got some family in town. Uh, tell you what, come back next time and I'll, I'll hook you up. I just... And you hear from behind him someone say, Hey, don't break the pattern on my account. They go here in between each arc, don't they? <laughs> Through the back curtain steps a human. Well, at first he's a human, but he quickly changes into Blade Vigil. Then Carl the Pug of Pegacorn. Sammy, who you met in the Toe Jam Ks, and... Others you don't recognize. He rotates from shape to shape, person to person, never taking on one for very long. And Gary says, Oh, um, yeah. Hey, guys, this is my cousin. Uh, he's a metamorph. Did, did we already meet a metamorph? No, we met a many soul. A many soul. Yeah, yeah. No, that's different. So, you know how elementals are made up of stuff? Like, I'm an earth elemental, so I'm made up of earth, and fire and elementals are made up of fire. Well, metamorphs are made up of story, and um, it's incredibly off-putting. And his cousin says, it's not off-putting, it's a fun hat tip. Gary turns around and yells at him, to who? To who? You see how weird this is? <laughs> it's only weird because you're making it weird. Anyways, Gary says, trying to hustle you, you out the door. you want us to take off for a second while you guys hash this out? This yeah, is that would be really good. Okay. Uh, no magic stuff. Come back later and I'll have something <laughs> fun and wacky. And just before you open the door, Gary's cousin says, oh, oh, I've got stuff for you guys. Come check it out. And he beckons you over to where he's standing. In front of him is a miniature pool of water, inside of which small ships are taking off and landing from around the edges. He reaches in and pulls out a series of objects and lays them on the table in front of you. There we go, he says. Just had to get them from my ducks folder. And then he grins at you like he's made a joke. So these, everything that the metamorph has, were created or contributed by our dungeon master level patrons. What? Yeah. So I have a list of 29 objects here. You can each choose one of them. They are magical objects designed by our Dungeon Master level patrons with various references to our other shows and the rest of our podcast first. And some of them are just cool D&D things. Okay, Dave, you're up first. Uh, what are you going to go with? Am I talking? Who am I talking to? Uh, I'm, you're talking to me, Eli, right now. Okay, hello. Yeah. Eli. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So I'm just scanning down this list. So far, the packet of black pepper is very tempting. Mm -hmm. Created by Brit 
Crossin. Thank you, Britt. Okay. Okay, there's more stuff. Automatic crossbow. Who created that? Oh, that's Alex Simpson. Okay. The frosty glass of mead. Mm -hmm. Created by Brady O'Brien. I could crush some mead right now. Is it the same Alex that's in the way of the shadow guy? I think it is. Yeah, I think they're both named after. Wouldn't put mead in a frosty glass. That's weird service. (laughs) Skip that. Cuddly stuffed dragon. That's the one that I think you should get. I'm a dragon. Yeah, I, it just seems like it's like your your little mascot. Yeah, I, I mean, but like... he already has a little mascot, though. Yeah, you could make Carl jealous. That's what I'm thinking. I summon Carl the pug of Pegacorn. Wait, why doesn't <laughs> Carl sleep with you in your bed? I'm I'm gonna ask him about that right now. Carl, hey, it's me. Hey, what's going on? A couple things. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm Dave now. I'm Dave now. How's, um, how's it going? Why, uh, why don't you sleep with me? First of all. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say I, mean, I haven't gotten I mean, this question like, before. We would phrasing, sleep together, not, d- not sexually. I mean, why are you not like my bedmate? Oh, well, I'm a demon, so I prefer to be in the seven hells. Oh, unless uh, I'm, I'm into that. As you're, oh, you're into the seven hells. You no, like a well, scorching demon eternal flames? Bedmate. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Tonight, if you want, we could have a little cuddle. I'll just set the bed on fire and we could sleep in it together. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll circle back. back. We'll circle back. Okay. We'll circle back. Uh, also, question. If yeah. I was to, say, uh, start to own a very cuddly, stuffed dragon magical item, would that? how would you react to that? Uh, and he sort of eyes the metamorph, who at this point is actually turned into like a balding man in a tank top uh, and he turns to Carl and says don't give anything away and he goes Tony I would never give anything away and he says okay because you know that would kind of ruin it and then the metamorph turns into uh, Blade Vigil which is awkward because Blade is standing there and Blade Vigil as the metamorph says yeah don't give anything away and Carl says I'm not going to give anything away I just told Tony well I wasn't here when you said that we should have taken those voice acting classes who said that (laughs) okay but Carl I feel like you still haven't like even slightly answered my question uh, I wouldn't worry about it offending me. <laughs> I feel like okay, he gave something away. I just that's uh <laughs> super, super suspicious the way you said that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just a demon. I don't know what it is. I'm I feel like you do. Bug? Nope. No. No. Regular? No, no idea. <laughs> Regular? No. Mm, I will take the cuddly stuffed dragon, please. <laughs> All right. Again, created by Dungeon Master patron Sammy Marie. If this dragon has been treated nicely, when its owner is in danger, it will transform into a dragon and protect them for as long as it's alive or until the danger is passed. Then it will fly away and never return. And Mm. the kind of dragon is determined by a table that I have created. So you have a dragon table right now? I have a dragon table. How many cells does it have? 18. Wow. It's a six by three. Yeah, I'm going to have to fucking make two more. Okay. <laughs> so it's a D20. Or, or even more than that. Hey, you guys, I have plenty of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have your stuffed dragon. Who's up next? I'll go. All right. Snedrick. All right. Well, I'm thinking, you know, we're wandering around in magical lands. I see a lot of mushrooms. Along the way, I want to take that there teapot. All right. Oh, okay. This was submitted by the Wooden Dude. Thank you, the Wooden Dude. And actually comes to us from D&D Beyond. Uh, This is a magic item called the Teapot of Peace. Magical teapot. If anyone is aware of the teapot being poured, they are immediately compelled to sit down and have tea. Wisdom saving throw 18. Works during combat. It can only be used if it's full of tea, which must be brewed and steeped normally. So I just have to walk around with tea in it. (laughs) Right. Wow. If anyone sees the tea being poured, they have to sit down Mm -hmm. or make a saving throw. Nice. That's pretty fucking sweet, actually. (laughs) Yeah. That's great. You can force 90% of people to drink tea on command. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I would... Claude, do you mind if I go next? No, go for it. As long as you don't take mine. I I think I'll take the jug of mysterious liquid. Ooh. It was between that and the woolen socks because my feet get cold (laughs) sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the jug of many things 
created by Conrad Michaels, would never let anyone take his baby unless the price is right. Uh, this is a gallon-sized jug that will produce the following liquids per day. Two gallons of mayonnaise, eight gallons of fresh water, two gallons of beer, one gallon of mango nectar, two <laughs> gallons of urine, one gallon of Mountain Dew Black Label. <laughs> Not Baja Blast? And that's the result. <laughs> I don't like any of those. There was beer in there. Yeah. I know, but I make and it mayonnaise. better beer than this. You know, I'll send it to, to my friend in a, back in my hometown. Nice. And Claw, that leaves you left. I am going to go with the greasy looking grenades. The greasy looking grenades. I don't grenades. feel like we can trust Claw with greasy looking grenades. <laughs> <laughs> After a brief struggle where Claw gets to the grenades, <laughs> his bird uh, hands are just going to drop those all over the place. I don't think this is a good idea. This is like the blunderbuss all over again. <laughs> So these are also submitted by the Wooden Dude, and uh, also oh, available on D and D No, it's fine. It's, okay, I, okay. Otherwise, if I had it to be fair, some of them would suck, and then be like, "Oh, sorry, I had to pick one." Okay, <laughs> we're looking at you with our woolen socks. Sorry, that's <laughs> yeah. not your power. Sucks. How dare you? That's Taru. That's Taru. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. We love the woolen socks, Taru. Don't <laughs> listen to them. Don't listen. I always wear woolen socks, by the way. Woolen so wool socks. I'm wearing are the woolen shit. socks right now. They are great, <laughs> they're, and I wish I'd gotten them. They wick away the moisture. <laughs> <laughs> Grease grenade. A fist-sized glass ball that spills one D20 plus five feet of grease when and where it shatters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now, now I feel bad for Dave, right? Because like, if anybody's going to get the shit end of that. Now that says grenades. So yeah, I more you have one, right? Yeah, there are five of them, I think. Sick. Shenanigans. <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry, Eli. I know you're probably not supposed to tell us, but can you tell us what the packet of black pepper did? Because both it's literally he, like, just could... a packet of black pepper. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Wait, were the were the woolen socks also just woolen socks? No, the woolen oh, socks man. are. Taru created them. They're really cool. Listen. A set of magic woolly socks and mittens, which temporarily change the wearer's foot slash hand into any beast's foot slash hand. Oh my god, I would have fucking loved that. God. They scale according to the wearer and have the same properties as the beast would. For example, a pair of gecko's feet would give the ability to walk on walls. Oh. Socks must be worn without shoes. I and they're called the woolies. Would never wear shoes Should again. we revisit? I no, my teapot's pretty fucking sweet. So. Yeah. This stuff is so. So the stuff that the Dungeon Master patrons created is so cool. We we might see the metamorph again just so that we can appreciate some of these other things oh. on the list. Okay, and just to be clear, Bridget's carrying a ridiculously heavy bag of liquids right now, right? No, I am carrying a jug of mysterious liquid, and actually I would like to pour some of it on his shoes right now. All right, roll a D5 for me. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> What's urine in there? Come on, Morgan. <laughs> oh, here we go. I think he hates mayonnaise more. <laughs> D5. There's not a fucking D5. Roll a D4. <laughs> <laughs> right, roll a D4 and a D1. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a two. That's a two, which means that... <laughs> roll a marble. <laughs> <laughs> means that... Uh, oh, eight gallons of fresh water <laughs> pour out onto Dave's feet. Boring. Boring. I'm going to do it again. Yeah. Two <laughs> gallons of beer. <laughs> nice. I licked some up. <laughs> Off your own shoes. You yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I can't do anything that embarrassing myself. Though. I wring um, a shoe out into a glass also. <laughs> nice. As Gary's cousin finishes handing out the items and explaining them, Gary says, See? I didn't understand like half of that shit. What the hell was that? And his cousin says, well, <laughs> if you didn't want me here, you could have just not invited me. And Gary's like, oh, look, you're so self-aware. No one can criticize you because you got out in front of it first. How smooth. <laughs> and Blade turns to you and says, uh, I think we should leave them to it. And you walk away from the cabin with the elementals arguing behind you in the distance. The next morning, Blade gathers you all in the main room of the squeaky wheel. All right, everyone, listen up. The next piece of the wand is definitely going to be your most difficult yet. As I told you when we started this quest, not all those who contributed to the wand of seven parts are friendly or even good. The holder of the next piece of the wand, the heartstring, King Asarak, hasn't been heard from for many years. 
nor has anyone returned from his kingdom. Sorry. His name is Aserak? Yep. <laughs> King Aserak got it. Please tell yep. me that's not a patron that he's, you've named it after. <laughs> nope. Okay, nope. good. Good. Nope. Okay, Heath, go ahead. Famous. <laughs> Famous Dungeons & Dragons. I have no idea what you'll face there, but if the rumors I've heard are true, death might be the least of your worries. It's definitely not going to be the least of them. I'm f- I feel like there will be <laughs> lesser. Hey, well, you know, I don't need to get that. Proceeding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.